The Lamb East is a bit feast or famine this year. The Pirates headline this division, along with the Red Sox and Yankees. The Pirates return the league's most powerful offense and a solid rotation. Not much can be said for the Yankees and Red Sox as they're both new, but one thing's for sure. They're both going to need to find offenses to keep up with the Pirates and rotation to keep the Pirates down. My prediction, Yankees third, Red Sox second, Pirates take it all. A few hours later and a few degrees colder, we have game four of the day between the Angels and the Rays. Josh Longo on the mound for the Angels again. Being the same typical dominant self, he gets Roselle looking, gets Horwell swinging twice, and he gets Aussie swinging on one away and one on the inside. On the flip of the coin, Chris Horwell had a tough day on the mound. He couldn't find the strike zone. Here he walks Longo, then walks Cookfair on a pitch outside, and then Longo. He has one that seems to go foul at first, but then curves in for a single. Aussie would pick up in relief after Horwell gives up five. Aussie had his wicked curves in motion, but they couldn't hit the strike zone. Here, Longo gets his chopper down the line, and then Cookfair slipping, gets a single. Watch out for the collision right here. Ooh, close play. Another chopper, Aussie with a heads up play as he gets Cookfair out at home before he touches. And what was the hit of the day? Jay Roselle back to the pitcher, but whammy gets hit at first base. We'll look at that one again. And slowly crawling back, touch first, Jay. You'll never hit a bigger one in your life. He's day to day. But Jesse Horwell closing it out for the Rays, being dominant. Expect him to start Thursday in the Rays opener. It was a dominant game for the Angels. They win 7 0. Longo, a complete game, one hitter with 10 Ks. Horwell picks up the loss. Five runs in two innings pitched. All right, now we move on to the Hess West. The Rays, A's, and J's all will vie for the crown in the Hess West in 2009. We start with the Rays. Captain Jay Roselle had a lot of free agent work to do in the offseason. He goes out and signs basically an entire new roster, signing Rookie of the Year Anthony Ospelmeyer and Colin Phillips, led the league in home runs. Also picked up two great bats in the brothers, Jesse and Chris Horvath. Yeah. Definitely uh, a very mixed team here. I gotta wonder if they're gonna coalesce in time, but if they do, they could definitely be a very strong team that could upset a lot of really ranked and established teams. But certainly the issue with the Rays right now is starting pitching. Where in the world is Colin Phillips? We've yet to see him in 2009 during any spring training pickup games. Also, who's their number two starter? Jesse Horwood has looked pretty impressive as of late and looks to be the number two starter right now. But where does it go from there? It, is it Aussie on the mound? It, will Roselle pitch? Will Chris come in the game, Hordell? We don't know. We don't know. It's kind of a mess. Oh yeah. You definitely need strong pitching in this league. If anything has proven that, this league over any other league in America, dependent on pitching. And that's because of the baseball style rules. So, yes, Jesse Horwell looks like he's gonna be a good pitcher. But then who's going to be number two? It's got to be CPD. He's got to be there. One team that doesn't seem to have pitching issues, however, is the A's. Anchored by ace Tom Tierney, who was a sign on candidate in 2008, and Nick Bogue on the back end of the rotation. One of the better rotations in the Hess division. Oh, yeah. Definitely a big pickup by now for Tierney to re-sign. There were questions. If he wasn't going to come back, were the A's going to compete now that he's back? Seems like it. But they have to be sure that they have all of their players there for every game. Because last year, they had so many games where there were three players that they couldn't contend. And that's going to be the issue again this year. Are their players going to be there in time? And is their offense going to pick up? You can't win games unless you score runs. One big pickup for the A's was Dan Clark. He's looking to add a solid bat in the middle of that lineup. He's shown that he can bring some great offense in a game away from Hesfield Wiffle Ball. But now he has to prove himself in the lead. So we'll see. It's a little late. He's going to have to show himself during the season. But if he shows up, I think he can definitely pick things up. The third team looking to take the Hess West title in 2009, the Blue Jays. Coming off of a 1-13 record last year, including playoffs, they look to improve on that record with some big key acquisitions. One of that being Southpaw Eric Verhaden. It's questionable how much he's actually going to play, but if he does make it on the mound, we know what he can do. He can be good at times. I think that Verhaden might be a little bit overrated. If he makes it to the games, how much of an impact is he going to bring? I think a, a hitter like Ryan Conover, who's returning from last season, he's picked up his game. I think he's going to get a little more hits. He's going to help out their offense. 
more than it was doing last season for sure. Uh, new acquisitions also, Andrew Wild Thing Wildrick, as well as returning players like Joe Villalobos look to improve on last year. Uh, words coming out of the Blue Jays camp say that Villalobos has really been improving his stuff, that he might make a good ace for the team. I think that they made a lot of good acquisitions. We don't know too much, but I think that the Jays are going to be on the lower end of the teams here in the Hess division, and especially in Hess East. So who does it run down to? It definitely depends on who's going to show up. That more than anything in any other division. If the A's can bring their offense to the table, they could run away with it. If the Rays bring their pitching to the table, they might secure it as well. So, based on what I've seen, I think that the A's might be a little more conservative with their offense over the Rays pitching. So, I think that they just eke it out. But, the Rays make the playoffs as well. Either way, the Hess West will certainly be one of the biggest divisions to watch this year. And now Buster only gives us his thoughts on the Hess West. The Hess West is arguably the most competitive division and is the only division without a new team. It features the Rays, the Jays, and the A's. Now the Jays went out and made several offseason acquisitions to make their team better. However, it will be tough to compete with the upper two teams, the A's and the Rays. The Rays boast a powerful offense led by Rookie of the Year, Anthony Ospelmeyer. However, the A's boast the, the best rotation with Nick Bove, and Tom Tierney, who combined for 97 Ks last year. To me, pitching wins in this league. I'm taking the A's 1, the Rays 2, and the Jays 3. This year of Hester Wolfball will certainly be the biggest and best yet. 12 teams, 4 fields, 4 divisions, over 100 players. And tonight, we have the man who started it all. It's been just under a half a decade, but the league has come a long way. Now, Commissioner and Creator Chris Hess has a lot on his mind. Tonight he tackles very important issues such as his real true love, whether he's more proud of playing in the league or owning the league, and who exactly is the next Chris Hess. In our Sunday sit-down, Buster the only only sits down with Commissioner Chris Hess.